Karibuni tena. Welcome back. In keeping up with our series on better relationships, um, we're going to, I just thought about something interesting to talk about and I was like, mm, this might be a good idea or it might not be. Things kids wish they could say but can't. And the reason why I thought this was important was for a variety of reasons. One being to be the spokesman for the voiceless. And number two, for people who are trying to be better parents or who are new parents and are, you know, just gearing up for the next 20 year run of parenthood and also for those parents who are like you know curious about like what do my kids really think you know and how can i mend the relationship that i have with my kids like you know and this is just like a little sneak peek and also for healing you know sometimes we carry on we hold on to things that happened in our childhood, things that, issues that we had that we didn't address or didn't um, externalize. So this kind of, I find like therapy has many forms. It could be in hearing, expressing yourself, writing things down on a journal or like having a friend hear you out. And sometimes, honestly, healing can happen through um comedy i know for me a lot of it um that's how i get over certain situations or confront and deal with certain situations so i'm not saying this is going to be 100 percent funny okay i know kevin hart up in here but i'm just me and this is the contribution i guess i can make to society and so without further ado let's get going so the first thing that i wrote down on my list is that kids feelings matter and this is to do with emotional growth and sensitivity and for some of these things i might not be able to elaborate like scientifically or psychologically and i am not a certified therapist or a certified or a clinical psychologist or whatever i'm just a human being and i don't think that discredits the validity of some of the points that I make because I mean what would therapists be without subjects right anywho so yeah kids feelings matter and another way that I think will help is like if I give examples maybe that's more relatable and an easier way to expound on the points that I give so kids feelings matter and I thought this was very important because that is the basis of this whole conversation people don't take kids seriously they're just like ah you guys are little what do you know about life you have no experience whatsoever so i'm just gonna do whatever i want roll all over your feelings and yeah you get over it so one of the examples that i give is um like for example if your kid is having a hard time making friends and you're just like ah there are going to be enough friends in this world you don't need to worry about those ones even though it's like a way to make your kid look forward to something in the future sometimes trivializing this feeling of not being wanted or not being accepted into a group of people can actually be internalized and then a kid goes grows up thinking that they don't fit in anywhere and then they develop social anxiety and then they become awkward around other people because they didn't get encouragement or their feelings weren't acknowledged by you as a parent and yeah that could lead to like just weird social behavior social anxieties and by me saying weird i'm not saying like oh it's a terrible or a negative thing it's just like out of the norm right Another example is like if your kid doesn't know how to swim and is scared of swimming like in the deep end or something and then like you just laugh it off and like you throw them into the pool. So you create a traumatizing environment even though you're like ah that's how everybody learns how to swim and whatever but that kid like keeps that memory 
because it's associated with trauma right and it's trauma is i think one of the most understudied things or if it's studied let me just say i'm ignorant about it right um i haven't really looked into that but then like that memory stays with someone for such a long time that now like for example there's some people who now have a phobia of swimming just because of how it was introduced into their life but two is your words matter as a parent words can either build or destroy a person and the reason why i said this is that it's it affects the future character development of somebody and you can find like for example if you like insult your kid and you're like oh yeah you're so stupid or yeah you're just like your father you know you're never going to succeed at anything in life or you're just like your mom she's just so lazy and all she likes to do is make i mean take money and just shop like you know things like that they might be subtle they might be more direct but these things that we say have a way of influencing a future de a future behavior it can either be like kids end up becoming like um, the things that you said about them or they try to run away and not be like what you said and they endeavor to prove you wrong so yeah watch out for what you say about kids just because they're young don't think that oh they're not going to remember what you said or it's not going to affect them in any way it is uh, number three authority is not synonymous with abuse and abuse extends to all types verbal mental emotional spiritual sexual physical just because you're a parent doesn't give you the right to deny someone basic human rights or to lord whatever rules whatever things that you think you can get away with just because you're a parent and this doesn't mean oh don't discipline your child this doesn't mean don't correct your child no everybody knows what abuse is and the reason why i say is this is like many people especially like in uh what do you call them communal societies we have this thing about like oh yeah don't talk back to your elders oh you can't correct your elders they know better than you they're wiser than you they've lived longer than you so they use that to like abuse you sometimes like you know just because they're older than you doesn't mean that it's right you know the funny thing is like people always wonder like oh my gosh why are my kids like abandoning me in my old age <laughs> if you don't treat your children well they are never going to as soon as they get the opportunity to run away from you or to distance themselves from you they're gonna do it believe me number four no i wish i could say no so many times but like you know like this has to do with like playing your position you're a child what do you know right but later on as you grow up you know life isn't like oh staccato life is like a continual a continuous flow right so it doesn't matter what age you are you could be 30 you could be 40 50 60 70 whatever just as long as one or both of your parents is alive i think learning to say no and being respected being accepted being embraced develops emotional security because you know that you can comfortably have an intimate relationship with someone and they won't reject you even if you say no to their demands and i think it also helps you establish independence sometimes like you can grow up in a family setting where it's all about the family unit it's all about community it's all about the clan and you feel tied down and you take part in rituals you take part in um traditions that don't really define who you are and you have to say no 
to establish healthy boundaries and to also develop independence and it helps you say no to other things around you like um, say no to toxic relationships say no to toxic environments like if your workplace you're experiencing sexual harassment you know how to say no if your boss is overworking you and underpaying you you know how to say no if your spouse is being unfair you know how to say no if you are dating and your significant other is not meeting you halfway you know how to say no and for you as a human being it's just saying no helps other people to respect you because you respect yourself and it all starts in the home number five I'm not just a kid I'm a human being first and foremost I feel like especially as we grow older like if you're 10 if you're 12 especially as you get into your adolescence you want someone not to look at you as a piece of property but to also look at you as a human being like treat me fairly just because as i'm a kid doesn't mean i don't have rights you know just because i'm a kid doesn't mean i have to do everything you say just because i'm a kid doesn't mean i don't have feelings it doesn't mean i don't have aspirations i don't have goals I'm a human being first and foremost. Treat me with love and respect. Treat me the way you'd want to be treated. Number five, I mean, sorry, number six. And this is like going to be an oxymoron from number five because it's like, I'm just a kid. And this teaches, not really teaches us, but then sometimes I find like parents tend to and this is because they're human beings too, not, you know? It doesn't mean, I'm not trying to demonize the characteristics of parents, but then this is just like, sometimes parents can come home with stresses from work, stresses with other friends, stresses from, like, you know, all types of the world. And then they bring those stresses into their household and then they make you feel guilty for things that you're not even aware of, things that have nothing to do with you they project those feelings onto you right sometimes they can guilt trip you with like bills you know they tell you like ah this is so expensive not because you're doing something wrong not because like you have the lights on all night but then they make you feel like oh you're a burden to them you know like oh the bills are too high or oh you should be thankful for the things that i do for you and the thing is like I'm a child I don't have the skills to cope with whatever it is that you're coping with or whatever it is that you want out of and for me to carry on those responsibilities that are yours and that you can handle as an adult and then you give them me the reason why I'm saying this is like um, I was watching a TV show and like this chick was talking about how she had to be like the mother i mean the the father in that home to her to her sisters and she had to be the man of the house and also similar for guys in situations like let's say you're unfortunately you're from a single parent home and as a boy you're told oh yeah you're the man of the house now you have to take care of your mom you have to take care of your siblings there's kid level responsibilities and there's adult level responsibilities and sometimes parents tend to just throw those responsibilities on kids like if you watch like super nanny how these guys and i'm not saying this is wrong but then like an example is like how these guys had many 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 children and then now they're like oh they gave this kid like so much adult responsibility like parenting responsibilities and he got so stressed to a point where he had like i think it was like i don't know if it was an emotional or a nervous breakdown but he was so stressed he collapsed he fainted and he was like i didn't ask for this like i'm just a kid i'm missing out on my childhood like i don't want to be sitting at home taking care of the kids i have homework i have to play with my friends i just want to be a kid so that's what i'm saying i'm just a kid 
And the only way he could say that is like in the presence of somebody who could hear him out. So parents, we are just kids. Let us be kids, okay? And number seven, you're not always right okay and the thing that comes into mind is that matilda where the headmistress was like I, th I don't remember who she was yelling at but she was like i'm big you're small i'm right you're wrong and there's nothing you can do about it and that's an attitude parents have a lot of times and I'm sure they have their own reason as to why they do that but then like when it's like a constant thing and especially when they are in the wrong or especially when as a child like you kind of wake up to the fact that your parents are just human and they they make a lot of mistakes you're like you're not always right but then you're kind of scared of telling your parent that and the thing about this the lesson I guess in there for parents is humility be humble enough and don't be naive to the fact that one day your kids are going to wake up to the realization that you're not perfect you're not gods you're not a god you're not god you're not perfect and you're going to mess up and also on justice like it's a good lesson if you want to teach your children about justice you also have to be willing to kind of admit when you're wrong right and this will help them have a healthy view on justice and how to apply it and they can do that to future generations uh yeah so you're not always right i know a couple of things <laughs> a couple of situations were in my head like mm -hmm. i was just like mm -hmm. sure you're right sure 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 yeah, number eight, please let me be me. And I think this one is a bit more deep because, and this isn't really about me, but I've seen it especially like in university, like parents pressure kids to take a certain degree or to be in a certain career and that kid is just in school and they're like, I don't even want to be a doctor. I want to be like an artist. Or they're like, I don't want to be in the army. I just want to like go to school and be an accountant. And then, and it just really kills the spirit. And please have faith in your children that they will do the right thing and they will succeed in life, okay? We're eggs, yes, we're fragile as children, but then as we grow up, we're going to toughen up. We're going to pursue the path that leads us to thrive. So please have faith that I will make the right choices to do what I want to do and succeed in it. And it also helps kids like discover who they are and develop an identity and be aware of it like don't get married don't have kids don't do those things to please your family and then be miserable in that situation and then be a miserable partner to be a miserable parent fail don't be depressed so please let me be me i just want to live i just want to be happy i just want to try and fail but i'm me that's all i want to be i don't want to sit home and study all day i want to play i don't want to be as perfect as so and so's kid i'm your kid and i just want to be me see me in all my colors see me in all my shades you know and love me for me please let me be me because we're not like oh you should be like so and so's mom you should be like so and so's dad like the backhand you get or the nasty dirty looks we get like what if we don't do that to you don't do that to us please let me be me um number nine i need you and this ties into some of the points that 
we've talked about and I need you and this means like sometimes as kids we just need you to be mom we just need you to be dad we need you to hold us not coddle us but we need you to hold us we need you we need your guidance we need you to provide for us the things that we need we need security we need you to be responsible don't gamble our money okay don't talk about us negatively to your friends as you like talk about how hard it is being a parent and what a nuisance we are we need you to be on our side we need you to help us grow to be the human beings that we are meant to be if you had your chance in life help us have our chance in life help be our support system root for us do the best you can for us we need you and this helps us also as kids to in the future to be good leaders to be dependable to be accountable because we mirror the things that we see we gain security from knowing that the people we need we can rely on if you take everything as a child on your shoulders that what happens when you have an emotional breakdown what happens when you uh, when you just like can't handle it anymore it can be devastating so we need you to be parents so for those who are slacking for those who are negligent wake up we need you number 10 is i'm ready for the truth and this is like for over sometimes parents can be overprotective and that's not like necessarily a bad thing it's just like they don't want us to be exposed to the evil things of the world so we're coddled sometimes or we're not allowed to experience things for our own good at a certain time but it's good for parents to understand that at a given time in life we will be exposed but when we are exposed to those things we want to be equipped to handle those situations so we want we are ready for the truth about the world that it's not this like warm and bubbly and you know fuzzy friendly place that it gets cold and sometimes we need to bundle up because it's a cold ass world we need to know the truth about sex so that we can protect ourselves and make good decisions we need to know the truth about money number 11 don't stay for the kids don't never stay for the kids if there's trouble in paradise kids see a lot of things kids understand more than you think they do and those things that they've seen they carry on to their future adult relationships so sometimes people develop mommy issues some people develop daddy issues we don't know how to love and let me say we don't know how to love correctly so if the marriage or the partnership isn't working just it's better just to split up don't say oh it's for the children trust me what we will tell you is please go please leave it's better i think kids can thrive better in a situation where both parents are happy and both parents are doing great by the kids because witnessing any type of sadness, witnessing any type of abuse, witnessing living in a cold environment, an environment devoid of respect, is one of the worst things you can ever put a child through because they have nowhere to escape. They don't have money to go and move out and live in their own homes. They don't have the emotional intelligence the emotional skills to deal with whatever is going on and then we make bad choices or we have to go and heal ourselves and encounter people who don't have our best interests at heart 
don't stay for the kids. Stay for love. Stay because you're both committed to doing that. Don't stay for appearances. Don't, don't stay for that fake stuff. Ain't nobody got time for that for sure. It ain't that time. Um, number 12, let it go. Let the past go. Let whatever happened to you and scarred you, let it all go. And this can, this can mean so much. Whatever hurt you in the past, whatever injustice you experienced in the past, let it go. Start anew. Let it go. Get inner peace. Get freedom. It's never too late to turn over a new leaf. Let it go. As kids, we want you to be happy. As kids, we don't want that in our lives. We don't want to pay for your sins. We don't want to pay for the sins of your forefathers. We don't want it. Let it go. Become a new person. Number 13, it's all right to cry. And this goes out to parents who have such a hard time and they're doing their best that they can. But then somehow they feel like they're not doing enough and they feel like their kids deserve everything and they wish circumstances could be different and they're just killing themselves, overworking themselves, internalizing stress, internalizing burdens of the world. And the thing is like we can see it, we can see it, we can feel it. And when you need that moment, it's okay to cry. It's okay to cry. Crying is just releasing pent up emotion. Doesn't mean you cry forever. Doesn't mean you be depressed. But it's okay to cry. And I read somewhere that tears contain a certain hormone. And when that hormone is released, it's actually like a calming, soothing. It has that effect. So you can cry and crying is such a good reliever of emotions. It just, have you ever cried? And then like after you've had a really, really good cry, you feel like, whew, it's going to be okay. And even though you don't feel it immediately, eventually you feel it. At least you've let it out. And you're more receptive to positive things because you've left, you let the bad out and now you want to let the good in. So it's okay to cry. Um, number 14, thank you. And this means we can never say to enough of it, even if we try. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your nurture. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the things you did that we know of and the things that we don't know of and the things that you will do. Thank you so much. Thank you for your love. Thank you for, your, for teaching us, for your encouragement. Thank you. We can never say it enough. Thank you. Thanks, mom and dad. Thank you. Um, number 15, sorry. And why is it? I think parents are the most important people in our lives. And the people who don't really have a good relationship with their parents, I get so, saying sorry is hard. But Many times, especially when we grow up and we become parents ourselves and we think back on the things that we were ungrateful for, the things that our parents endured in silence, we have a hard time saying sorry. And yeah. As a human being, sorry, saying sorry is the hardest thing. Saying sorry and actually meaning it. 
Yeah, and in the pride of our youth, we're like, no, I'm not apologetic for nothing. But yeah, saying sorry is a really hard thing. <laughs> yeah, moving on, number 16, the last and final thing for today is it's never too late to start over again. You can do it. You can do anything you want to do just because like we see parents in a certain way. We believe that, oh, you have to have achieved certain things at certain ages. And that's like, a like it has its place. But I think it's a very, it doesn't really, it, it prevents people from living life and achieving all that they possibly can because they're like oh my gosh i don't have a house if i don't have a house right now i never will if i don't have a car by this age i'll never get it if i never got to this degree i'm never going to get it it's too late for me i had kids at a, such a young age i couldn't pursue traveling i couldn't pursue whatever desire that i had or you know i've been divorced I'm too old to find love again or whatever is there. It's never too late. You can do it. Just because you're not young anymore or as young as you'd like to be doesn't mean you can't be whatever you want to be. It's never too late for you. We want you to thrive too as your kids because we love you with the same intensity that you love us and without you we wouldn't be here we wouldn't be doing a thing thing so thanks mom and dad <laughs>